Welcome back to DC Central and in today's video I'm going to be breaking down and reviewing The Flash Season 7 Episode 18 otherwise entitled Heart of the Matter Part 2 and otherwise known as the season finale for The Flash Season 7 so let's discuss. So another year, another season of The Flash has come and gone and Season 7 has certainly been a controversial season of The Flash, certainly one that has had very much mixed opinions and uh, a lot of controversy online. Uh, but now we've reached this season finale and I'll be honest, I was really looking forward to this finale despite how kind of rocky Season 7 has been. The last episode, Heart of the Matter Part 1, was a really, really strong episode for me that I had a great time watching and it really set up this season finale in a really strong and compelling way. So I was really looking forward to seeing what the writers were going to do with the season finale to wrap up this whole Godspeed storyline. And I have to say, now I've watched the episode, I think they handled it really, really well. So the episode picks up basically immediately where the last episode ended with Barry going into the mindscape of August Hart to try and understand who he is, unlock his memories and really understand why he's doing what he's doing and why he became Godspeed. And we get this really cool conversation between Barry and August where he's talking about his motivation and why he is the way he is. And basically, he is a physicist in the future whose dream was to become a speedster, you know, to become like the Flash, to become as fast as the speed of light. And he basically, we find out, he's the one who actually perfected and created the velocity formula uh, that's obviously been around on the show for a little while now. And he used it upon himself to make himself a speedster. However, what he then realized was that he would never actually obtain that true potential he would never be as fast as the flash or as fast as any other speedster because it wasn't true speed it wasn't you know a uh, real organic speed force it was artificial it was synthetic it wasn't actually going to bring him the speed that he wanted and this is what has caused him to you know try and collect speed from other speedsters and from people like the flash people like bart and nora he wants to collect their speed and wants real speed so he can be the speedster that he always dreamed of and this was quite an interesting motivation for me because i thought you know this is kind of similar to what we've seen from other characters in the past you know uh kind of like wanting to be a really strong speedster was kind of like what zoom was in season two and also throw in the motivation of you know he just really wanted to kind of be the fastest um and be faster than everyone else including barry that's kind of a little bit like reverse flash you know reverse flash just always wanted to be better than barry so he's kind of a mixture of reverse flash and zoom kind of put into one uh, but I really enjoyed him all, all together. Like, I think Godspeed was a really cool character, and obviously we've had a lot of build-up to Godspeed, um, you know, with Season 5, Season 6, and especially in Season 7, we've had a lot of build-up to Godspeed, and now we've actually got him, and we've seen him, and his arc kind of complete. I thought he was a really cool villain, a really strong one, and I think the actor who played August was really good. I enjoyed the conversation he had with Cecile in this episode, when he's just August, like, before his memories are unlocked, where he kind of talks about, you know, I... Well, the only thing I want is my memories back, but do I actually want them because, you know, you're all looking at me like I'm a monster. And I thought that was a really good conversation, and obviously it kind of goes nowhere in the end, because as soon as he restores his memories, he just reverts back to his evil self. But I thought it was kind of cool to kind of give him that scene, because it did kind of show the contrast that without memories and without the context, August was kind of a blank slate and could kind of be anybody he wanted to be. But as soon as he got those memories back, he was like immediately Godspeed again. But I thought that was really cool, though. And again, I thought that Godspeed, that conversation, the motivation, it worked for me. I thought it was cool, and again, it just added more to him as a villain. Now, when the Godspeed clones are out there attacking Central City once again, we get an incredible fight scene. A really cool team-up fight scene with every speedster that we have on the show currently. And it was awesome. So, Barry brings in Nora, aka the Speed Force, uh, the Speed Force Nora, um, to come in, help out, and give everybody a speed boost. And we see everybody get a little increase in their speed. That includes Barry, Nora, Jay... And even Bart, who obviously was in a coma at the end of the last episode, he comes out of that coma due to the Speed Force induction from uh, Speed Force Nora. And then also, we actually see Iris get her speed. Obviously, Iris, we've seen her be a speedster once before, back in Season 4. And I wish she thought that was kind of a cool episode. Um, I thought it was always kind of cool to see Iris as a speedster. I think it's always cool when we get to see a character who's not traditionally a speedster actually be one. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, kind of like how we got Killer Frost as a speedster this season. Like, that was kind of cool. Um, so, you know, we actually get to see Iris, who has a little bit of speed force in her following this season, get her speed. And we see her in the costume that she wore back in season four. 
And I just thought this was a really cool team up because we literally have a really good solid like team flash here with like a team of speedsters. And that was really cool. And you know, they get some really cool fight uh, moves that we get to see Bart using like these ninja star shuriken things. Um, we get to see Nora use that electric lasso that we saw in the last episode. Um, Nora is just OP, like Speed Force Nora is OP. Um, and then we get to see Jay use the hat, obviously. Uh, it's just like a really, really cool fight. And I thought it was awesome just to see all these speedsters that we love in costume fighting an army of god speeds. It's just one of those comic booky moments that, as a fan, you absolutely love. Now, we did have one other storyline going on in this episode, which is, again, a continuation from the last episode, with Joe and Kristen Kramer coming back into Central City after their kind of excursion out uh, outside of the city. And we get a really interesting moment here that I don't think anybody saw coming, um, where Joe and Kramer are inside of a car that's being attacked by two Godspeeds having a fight. And this is then revealed that when Joe tries to get out of the car and help other people as Joe, you know, he's a cop and he's a good guy, so of course he's going to help people. He's about to be killed by one of the Godspeeds, and Kristen Kramer activates speed. Like, she actually becomes a speedster for a minute and saves Joe and gets them out of that situation. And this, honestly, this was the most surprising moment of the episode, because unfortunately I did have something spoiled for me in this episode uh, before I watched it. Um, as that always tends to happen to me, but this wasn't spoiled for me. So when Kramer kind of turned into a speedster, I couldn't believe it. Uh, it genuinely kind of blew my mind. Um, so that was really cool and a really interesting moment. But we do get a follow-up scene to this later on where we kind of get it all explained. It turns out that Kristen Kramer isn't actually a speedster. She basically has a meta power that allows her to copy and um, replicate meta powers. So she is able to replicate the power of any meta human that she comes across, um, which explains how she survives the attack, um, you know, back earlier in her life that kind of kicked off this story. Um, as she was able to replicate the um, the immortality power of the guy that she was running from, I can't remember his name, um, but she was able to replicate his power, which is how he was able to or how she was able to survive. And in this case, she was able to replicate Godspeed's power to get Joe and save him out of that situation. Now, there is a problem with this: is that, uh, and I saw uh, Pagey mention this in his video as well, is that Godspeed isn't a metahuman. Um, especially not, like, he technically does become a metahuman in this episode, but not at this point. So, it was kind of a weird thing that she was able to replicate one of the Godspeed's speedster powers, because Godspeed isn't a meta, he's an artificial meta, um, not organic. So, I, I guess it, they don't really explain in this whether that actually matters or not, like, maybe she can replicate uh, artificial ones, but... It's just one of those things that, like, technically Godspeed isn't a metahuman, so how was she able to copy his power? But I'm not going to think about it too much. It was still a cool moment, it still made my jaw drop, and I still thought it was pretty damn cool. Now, after some back and forth between Barry, Nora, and Bart, they actually eventually decide to give August his organic speed. Um, and when this happens, of course, he just turns on everybody, becomes evil, becomes Godspeed, and goes out to cause more havoc. Um... And this is where Barry reveals he actually has a bit of a plan. So Barry goes out there to confront August once and for all. And we know that he kind of has a plan in this fight, but we're not entirely sure what that plan is or what it entails. Uh, but we do know that it involves Iris going with Speed Force Nora to try and anchor her uh, to the Speed Force. And we don't really know exactly what that means at this point. Uh, but anyway, we have Barry and Godspeed in a little bit of a scuffle, and Godspeed is just so much faster than Barry at this point. Like, given the fact that he has natural speed force now, and he's absorbed all of his clones, and he has all of their speed combined into his, he is just incredibly fast. He is so much faster than Barry. And we have him literally with Barry on the ground, about to take him out, and then who of all shows up but Eobard Thorn, aka the Reverse Flash, he shows up, to save Barry and to fight Godspeed. And this is such a great fight. I was so into this. And this has been a very controversial scene online. A lot of people have been really taking the mick out of this scene and people think it's ridiculous and stupid. And honestly, I don't understand why. We have this fight scene with Barry and Thorn teaming up to fight Godspeed in a Speed Force lightsaber battle. This was so cool to me. I don't understand why people have a problem with it. Like, no offense if you do have a problem with it. Like, you know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. If you thought it was dumb, fair enough. 
I just personally don't really understand why people found it dumb. I thought it was awesome. Like, we literally have Barry and Thorn, you know, ultimate hero, ultimate villain, back to back teaming up. I love when heroes and villains team up. I just always think it creates really cool scenes. So we have Barry and Thorn teaming up, and then on top of that, you have Godspeed, who's already a really cool villain in his own right, and they're involved in a lightsaber battle. And it was just so different. It was so cool. We had them an actual lightsaber battle. It was very much like the fight scene in Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, where we have uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan fighting Count Dooku in the beginning of the movie, where it was kind of like two on one. And it was just so cool. You had Godspeed with like two lightsabers. They all had their different colors, obviously based on their lightning. Like Godspeed had like two white lightsabers. Barry had his kind of yellowy orange one. Thorn had a red one. And they were just fighting each other like a classic Star Wars fight scene. And it was just so cool. I thought it was incredible. I couldn't get over it. I was just so excited watching it. I honestly gonna want to go watch that scene again because it was just so cool to me. And again, I've seen so many people talking about how stupid it is and how dumb it is. You know, particularly Twitter accounts online that like to kind of take the mick out of the CW shows out of context and stuff like that. Um, but honestly, even a lot of like Flash fans found this really dumb. I just genuinely really enjoyed this scene. I thought it was so funny and but funny in a good way, like a really entertaining scene. It was awesome. The choreography was really good. The CGI was really good. I just thought it was epic and like it was such a different speed to the fight like we've never seen anything like this like you know usually speeds the fights are kind of done in slow motion or you know it's just them running around chasing each other for a bit and then punching each other like getting like an actual lightsaber fight like a speed force lightsaber fight so so cool but the fight eventually ends with thorn killing godspeed with his uh lightsaber i guess um and this is where you know barry goes up to Thorn to try and confront him. Thorn then tries to kill Barry, but this is where we see that Barry is just so much faster than Thorn now. And he literally just immediately dodges out the way and throws Thorn on the ground. And I love Barry's reaction. I love his line where he's like, I got faster, didn't you? And you can just see this just enrages Thorn. Like, absolutely is he's seething after this because he's just like i created you you're a speedster because of me why are you faster than me and like you say it's just barry's reaction i got faster didn't you and i love that i love thorn's reaction to that as well because he just looks him dead in the eye and goes i will and it's just great and then thorn goes off and this is obviously like set up obviously before thorn comes back again um, I'm not sure when we're going to see Thorn next. You know, Thorn just tends to pop up every now and then on the Flash. We never really know when he's going to show up. Um, I didn't expect him to show up in this season, but here he is. Um, you know, this kind of seemed like setup for like him coming back with like a full force as a villain, which kind of leads to potential final season stuff. Um, even though Eric Wallace did say yesterday he plans, you know, he could see the Flash going on for many, many more, more seasons. Um, but yeah. I thought it was so cool. This whole fight scene, Barry and Thorn teaming up, taking out Godspeed, and then that ending interaction between Barry and Thorn, it was just perfect. And the episode ends with Barry and Iris renewing their vows. And I thought this was a really beautiful scene to kind of end the season because, you know, Barry kind of brings up a good point. He says, you know, we've been married for many years now, but you never really got the wedding that you deserved. Obviously, their wedding was kind of... Their first wedding was interrupted by Nazis from a parallel Earth, and then... Their second wedding was just kind of like an impromptu thing they did at the end of the crossover. So they never really had like a proper thing. Um, and I thought this was a really nice scene because obviously it took everyone to be there. They had Nora and Bart there. You know, even Jay and Joan were there, which were really cool. Um, and it was just a really nice scene. Cisco got ordained, so he was able to do it. Um, obviously, we had Cisco in this episode as well. Cisco's not in this episode that much, to be fair, um, which is why I haven't even mentioned him till now. But it was still great to have him here for this, you know, episode before he goes away again. Uh, but a really lovely scene where we got to see them, you know, renew their vows. Uh, Jordan Fisher, who plays Bart Allen, actually performed a song in the episode. He actually sings for them, uh, which again was really nice, really beautiful. Uh, you know, Jordan Fisher is, is kind of known as a singer at this point, so it was kind of nice to see that kind of brought into the show. Um, you know, The Flash is a very musically talented cast. You know, we've seen that many times before. Um, so it's nice to kind of have another one. Uh, but it was just a really nice scene to end. And then with their kiss, we get to see them, you know, Barry activates Flash time. And it was just a really nice way to end the episode. I thought it was really cool um, and a really nice sort of cap off to season seven, which, as I said, has been a fairly rocky season. But I think they ended it with these final two episodes really, really well. So, yeah, overall, I loved this episode. I thought it was really good. I've seen a lot of people, again, kicking it and I've seen a lot of people slating it. A lot of people maybe not 
particularly happy with the direction it went and you know I know a lot of people are pretty down on this season as a whole which is fair enough you know I do agree this season has been pretty ropey um but I think that these final two episodes you know as a cap off to this story to this season to the godspeed thing I thought it was done really well I really enjoyed it and to be honest these last two episodes are in my opinion the best of the season and they felt like classic the flash to me like, this felt like The Flash in the early days, which is kind of crazy, again, given the kind of quality of this season as a whole, but these last two episodes, they really felt good to me. I really enjoyed them, and I just, you know, they had that classic Flash kind of speedster feel that the show hasn't had for a while, and I just really enjoyed that. So for me, overall, I thought this was a great season finale. I think it wrapped up everything really well. I loved all the character moments. I loved all the fight scenes, you know, I loved Godspeed, I loved him as a, as a villain and his ending was really well done. The way they brought in Thorn was just unexpected but really well done and I just thought this was a great ending. But what did you guys think about this episode? Make sure you let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did you enjoy it as much as me or were you a little underwhelmed? Whatever you think, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And as always, if you want to see more content like this, I've got much more planned coming um, throughout the break. Uh, for example, I will be obviously doing my full Flash Season 7 review. I will also be ranking all seven seasons of The Flash, so you can see where the season ranks among the other seasons. Uh, so if you want to stay up to date with all of that and more, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any uploads from me. And hope to see you guys again next time.